this plot is the last of the experiments in this field, we knew that transplants would be able to compete with our clover living mulch, but we wondered what would happen if we had seeded crops. Would they be able to compete with this very vigorous green manure living mulch if we tilled the beds lightly, just as we did with the broccoli and for the tomatoes and peppers and eggplants, and tried to establish seed? So in these beds, again, we went through with the single shank subsoiler. Then we came through with the tillage equipment, the three foot tiller, and we tilled. And we tilled four times in this bed, about three to four days apart, because we really needed to decrease that clover. We needed to set the clover back as much as possible, in fact, kill it back if we could, so that we could plant seeds and have them germinate without having to compete with the clover coming back in. And for the most part, it's worked pretty well. Obviously, this is the one row where we've had to do significant hand weeding. In the other rows, we have done virtually no hand weeding which is pretty unusual. There are very few organic vegetable farms where there isn't an awful lot of hand weeding and hoeing done. So this row we've done hand weeding, but again, we haven't done as much as would be normal in, in this system because, in a vegetable production system, because we really haven't had the weeds. Here we have onions. And with these onions, there was quite a bit of bare soil in between the onion plants. So I went through and seeded Dutch white clover, all site clover, which doesn't grow as tall as the red clover. And so we wouldn't have annual weeds coming in between. And these onions are doing very well. They're, uh, they're all going to be a very large size. So we've realized that as long as we can give the seeded crops several weeks of bare soil so that they can germinate and get up to a certain height that the competition of the clover that moved back in doesn't seem to to compete with them too much as long as there are two important considerations met. Number one, they get all the water that they need. They don't want to compete for water. And number two, that the soil fertility is high and they get the nutrients that they need. So again, the onions are growing in very large. The one thing that we did find early in the season, some of the crops, particularly the large seeded crops like green bean, were a little yellow as they germinated and they got to be three to four inches tall. They were slow to grow and they had a little yellowing to their older leaves. And what we suspect was going on there is that because the clover was still breaking down and still releasing nitrogen and because the breakdown of that clover that we would tilled in is a microbial process. It takes the soil food web, all the microorganisms, the fungi, the bacteria, the actinomycetes, earthworms, all of the soil food web working to break that down that we saw a little bit of what is called nitrogen immobilization or the tying up of nitrogen by soil microbes while they break the organic matter or the, or the clover residue down. So while the major decomposition process was occurring, there was not enough nitrogen left over to cycle out to the crop. So we saw a little bit of nitrogen deficiency in the crop until the breakdown process was complete. And now the beans are growing very well and we're harvesting them at a record yield for us. If you like this sort of thing, come on out to the forums at permies.com where we talk about soil, homesteading, and permaculture all the time. Mm -hmm.